actually a long tradition in quilt making, which is when uh, women were traditionally uh, quilting out a quilt, sitting around a quilting frame, there would be scraps and pieces left over after that process. And there would be one last quilt made after they made more traditional patterns like wedding rings and so forth and so on. Um, and they would take those pieces and they would randomly sew them together in kind of a playful, humorous um, uh, way without any kind of worry about where, what it meant or, you know, what they were doing. But it still was, uh, were incredibly strong compositions when you look at uh, many of these quilts. Um, and it was almost like the fathers were to painting. You know, they, they didn't justify anything. Uh, they just uh, kind of put the pieces together the way they felt like them. You know, Eudora Welty talked about her photography in the same way that she didn't really try to justify anything to people about her photography because she didn't think of herself as a photographer. She just took pictures the way she wanted to. So this kind of like creative licensure interests me when I looked at the history of quilt making I'm uh, very influenced by, and um, and so I bring that to the painting. So uh, these are scraps of my life put together in kind of a random order, um, but with purpose. I call it kind of a controlled unpredictability. <laughs> you know, it's intuitive. Yeah. Well, when I was dating my wife Connie, uh, or my soon-to-be wife Connie. Um, she owned a horse farm, and it's the first time I'd ever been on a horse farm before. But right next to the horse farm was this um, uh, almost a wildlife refuge, if you will. It wasn't uh, designated by the state of Florida, but it was owned by the diocese of the Catholic Church, and the name of it was San Pedro. And all this, these 500 acres were beautiful wetlands and uh, uh, oak trees that were like 100 and 200 years old, like eight foot in diameter gigantic live oaks. Uh, it looked like something out of Gone with the Wind, you know. Um, live uh, wild turkeys, um, uh, sandhill cranes, gopher turtles, coyotes. I mean, it was just wonderful at night to hear the, the animals and stuff. Um, and the flowers and the wildflowers and stuff in the wetlands were just gorgeous. It was a painting mecca for me. And it, I started doing um, uh, plein air painting again because of it. I went out on location and I would paint live um, in some of these beautiful areas. Um, so recently the Catholic Church sold that property to a developer. Millions and millions of dollars were made and the name of the new development is called Hawk's Crest. And um, so their concept of developing was to bring bulldozers in and literally level everything in sight. I mean, there's literally nothing left. It's gone. A few trees left standing, but we're talking about we're talking about 20, 30,000 trees. I mean, massive numbers of these beautiful trees. And I just wept. I mean, it just crushed me like nothing ever had crushed me before, you know. And so in the process of them doing this, I went out real quick and I started photographing some of these areas that I love to paint in. Um, and I took those photographs and came back to the studio and I manipulated them um, in the way I, you know, I can't leave anything alone. And I uh, uh, did these compositions, um, these collages, if you will, of, um, in tribute to this space and something that I will sorely miss and um, it just kills my soul. But these constitute as a, as a kind of a, a memory quilt, if you will, yeah. of that space and, and uh, the things that I experienced there and that I love. Yeah. So, um, from what I can tell on the pieces that you put together, this collages, this uh, on um, pieces of canvas, and you right. apply photographs on paper. On paper. On paper. On paper. Yeah. So you've got uh, photographs placed on it, drawings, just a, a mixture it's of everything. things. It's okay. literally. Cut, cut paper, photography, tape, um, and I will, uh, when I join things up, it's very difficult for me to leave things alone. I can't just do a photograph and leave it alone. There's something there that just makes me want to uh, start merging things and pulling things together. And I still think it goes back to this crazy quilt concept. Uh, uh, it 
that I'm drawn to. And I do the same thing even in my ceramics work. I mean, I'll, I, I can't just make a handle and leave it alone. I've got to like touch it or twist it or, you know. Mm -hmm. It's got to be crooked, non linear. Not perfect. Yeah, not perfect. Not perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, and even they're not perfect squares. Right. Uh, which is, you know, I think symbolic of uh, nature. There's, you know, very few things in nature have perfect symmetry. Right. You know? right. right. So, uh, that's where that comes from. One thing I live by is this, and I think this sums it up for me as an artist. There's a guy named Reinhold Markshausen that says there's two kinds of artists, seekers and finders. And I would say this to any of you, no matter what your discipline is, this is a good rule to live by. Uh, seekers are people that talk about doing something one day. You know, I got this great idea. You know, they're always like looking for something. Okay? A finder, is the kind of student that I like, and I like to be around the kind of professional. Like, I've got this great idea, and here it is. You know, that's the person I'm gonna spend time with because they, they act on their dreams, you know, and their uh, the things that interest them and their beliefs guide them. So I, I I'm a finder. I have no fear about sticking stuff on something, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work because all artists make bad artwork. They just don't show it to you. Yeah. <laughs>